Hello and welcome to Women in the Word Bible Study with Women for Women. We are studying the book of Daniel. With me today, my friends Donna Griffith. Donna, welcome. Glad to be here. It's good to have you and your wonderful knowledge of the Bible and especially this very important book. Thank you for being here. And my friend Alta Austin, also a pleasure to have you, Alta. Well, it's nice to be here with you. Yeah, into the book of Daniel. Last episode, we studied chapter two. And uh, you know what, before we get started, let's have prayer. I meant to do that last episode and I forgot. So Donna, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Sure. Father in heaven, we come before your throne in the name of your son, Jesus. And as we open your holy word, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be with us, that he would be our teacher, and he would guide our minds. Mm. And we ask that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So last uh, program, chapter two, we saw what Nebuchadnezzar's dream was. And Daniel, because of God's uh, providence and interference, answer to prayer, Amen. was able to interpret that dream. And when we got done with chapter two, it came up, shouldn't we go back a little bit and talk about what that dream meant? Certainly it gives us some explanation beginning in, what do we say, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But let's break it down. Um, what does it mean? Who wants to start, Donna? Sure, I'll start. I wanna uh, go back to verse 36 and it says, this is the dream now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings. Where else in mm -hmm. the Bible is someone called a mm -hmm. king of kings? Mm -hmm. It's Jesus, reference yeah. to Jesus. Okay, mm -hmm. so Daniel is saying you are a king of kings, small k. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it has a deeper meaning to that when you get into the end times, right. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Because uh, Babylon is actually a false king of kings. And it's also interesting, too, King of Kings, that means, unlike, like I said in the last program, you know, at this time, Nebuchadnezzar is, he is king of the known, in, you know, whole entire world, you know, known world at that time, um, you know, and Jesus as King of Kings is mm. king of the whole world. Amen. You know, and so we see that, you know, that even though Daniel's saying you're King of Kings, you know, as we can tell in this, as the story goes on, there's going to be a king of kings, mm. capital, capital K. K. Yes. <laughs> amen. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on and he says in verse 38, you are this head of gold. And as we talked about in the last session, that was the first kingdom that is seen in this image. The head of gold represents a kingdom. That's key. That's very important, mm -hmm. right? Right. But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. And then the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all others. So maybe we need to discuss what do these other kingdoms represent? Who were they? Any ideas? Well, I, we can look at history and know who the kingdoms were. Amen. You know, we can see that the, the next one were the Medes and Persians that came in and conquered, which was Cyrus. And, and which Cyrus is a, what do you call type. it? A, a type of Christ mm -hmm. because he comes in and conquers Babylon. Mm -hmm. You know, the other, another way that we know the next kingdom is in chapter 5 of Daniel, mm -hmm. uh, King uh, Belshazzar is having a feast. Mm -hmm. Now, by this point, Nebuchadnezzar has died, and his kingdom is taken over during that feast by the next kingdom mm -hmm. of silver, which is the Medo-Persians, and that was King Cyrus, who you've just yes. said. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to the next kingdom, it's... It's Greece. Greece. Alexander the Great conquers. Mm -hmm. and, again, right. and again, we can see all this through history. This isn't just, you know... I mean, the prophecy was given before any of this happened. And so Daniel's seen into the future yeah. a thousand years before he's through. That's right. You know, because then we know that the fourth kingdom is, is Rome. Mm. That's right, the Iron Monarchy of Rome. And this was, uh, what was it, um, six centuries before yeah. Christ was born. Yes. Okay, so we have uh, the first kingdom of Babylon, which was the gold. Mm -hmm. The second kingdom is silver, which is Medo-Persia. The third kingdom is Greece, which is the bronze. Mm -hmm. Now, we also can know these kingdoms by the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to chapter 8, 
uh, excuse me, chapter 7 and chapter 8. It is a re-emphasis uh, of these kingdoms only in the form of animals. And actually in chapter 8, the, uh, Gabriel, the angel, names the kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's really clear that we're talking a span of history that is being seen in the dream and interpreted by Daniel. Mm -hmm. And that is the book. Now, iron. Iron is strong, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back to where, uh, to verse um, 41. Well, let's go back to 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything, and like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all others. Does that describe the Roman? Mm -hmm. Think of hammer. Think of hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Think of hammer, yeah. you know. Yeah. Rome was the hammer. Rome was the hammer, you know, and they would, they would go out uh, if, you know, an official was coming through, they would go out, they'd break up the ground, you know, the rocks and stuff. They would break anything that was in their path to make it smooth. Okay, and, and so Rome uh, was an empire or a kingdom for a very long time. I think it was clear into 500, after 500 A.D., you know, 500 years after the birth of Christ, that Rome was still the, the, the ruling really? power. Okay, I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 41, whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. Mm -hmm. Important point, iron doesn't go, um, the iron doesn't go away. Mm. The iron mm -hmm. of the legs continues yeah. down into the feet. Mm -hmm. So what is, it, what is it mixed with then? Well, it's mis mixed with the miry clay, and in my Bible it says clay in your ceramic, you know, um, what does it call it? Potter's clay. And Potter's mine. clay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Potter's clay. And so, what is man made from? Mm. The we dirt, go back. The dust. Of we the go ground. back to Genesis. Yeah. What's clay? Yeah. Clay is, you know, dirt yeah. <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. And we go back to the clay, and that's what man is made. You know, man, man is made is of clay. And so, and and yet, Rome or the iron represents a state. So now we have. And, and it's not religious, man, you know, a state is not religious, you know. Secular. Secular. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> <laughs> so we have each other. Right. Yeah, all of us together. Um, and, and so we have a secular, you know, state mixing with man. Amen. Mm. Trying to mix with man, but it's not just any man. Who no, let's go to Isaiah 64. Yes. We've got to decipher, what is this man? Mm-hmm. Who is this man? Isaiah 64, and we want to read verses 8 through 9. Isaiah 64. Almost there. Okay. <laughs> Verse 8. But now, O Lord, you are our father. You are the clay, and you are the potter. Mm. And all we are the work of your hand. Do not be furious, O Lord, nor remember iniquity forever. Indeed, please look, we all are your people. This mm -hmm. is talking about God's people, people or the church. And what was our, our country founded on? The separation of church yeah. and state. And yet we see in these verses, That's right. they're trying to join mm. church and state. That's right. They're trying to mingle church and state. So, to recap, the iron continues all the way into the toes, and the clay represents man, mm -hmm. but further than that, it represents God's church. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here we have uh, God's church and the secular government in the toes trying to join together. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens then? Let's read verse 42. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. Mm -hmm. And as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mingle with the seed of men. Where else in the Bible is that talked about? That's talked about in Genesis chapter 6, when the sons of God saw the women 
of, of man, man and mingled the together. Seed. And some people interpret that as angels, you know, sons of God. But no, it's talking about those who were true followers of, you know, mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. saw women that were worldly, yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah. and thought, hmm, she looks better than what we have over here. And then they started mingling the, the seed. And so the, it started getting less and less of what the original, what God had passed down. Mm -hmm. And then we end up with the flood. Wow. And it watered down the gospel. It did. It watered down the gospel. Mm -hmm. So we have here a mixture uh, of the seed of men, which would be unbelievers with believers, mm -hmm. right? So that is what the clay represent. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go to verse 44. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces, the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. So, the question, why does the stone hit the toes, hit the feet, when it's supposedly God's people? Why, why is God destroying this bottom part of the image? They're mingling, you know, the, the faults, uh, the tr you know, what, what God's people are supposed to be. They're, you know, and it's, it's a false interpretation mm -hmm. of the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's a false system of it's religion. religion. Mm -hmm. And um, it appears as if it's religious. Mm -hmm. It has the appearance of being godly. But God is saying, in essence, it's mingled. Mm -hmm. It's mingled with worldliness. Whenever you have church and state coming together, you have persecution. Mm -hmm. You can see that in the Dark Ages, the 1260 years of persecution of God's people, mm -hmm. where they had to go to the wilderness, but where millions were killed by a church-state system. Mm -hmm. right. Remember, it started with Constantine in Rome. Remember, he baptized his whole army by going through mm -hmm. the river, and he was mixing church and state. Right. And then, of course, he made church the, war, the government religion. And why did our people come to America? Because they were trying to escape persecution. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, they even brought it here to That's begin right. with. Yeah. You could not hold a, a public position unless you were belonged to the church. Mm -hmm. you know? Or, and I think... Yeah. I was going to say property, but I'm not sure that that's correct. Yeah. But yes, they did bring it here. Yeah. So what God is trying to tell us in this vision is at the end of time, there is going to be a system that will mix church and state. Mm -hmm. That the church will use the power of the state in order to enforce its dogmas. But can you convert a person by force? No. It's like proposing to somebody and holding a gun to their head and saying, <laughs> hey, I love you, marry me. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. And God's mm -hmm. government is never a government of force. Yeah. You could force the marriage, but you could never force the love, That's the right. commitment, the loyalty. That's and, exactly And right. God doesn't want it. He, no. You know, I mean, he didn't make us just, you know, animated. Yeah. You know, he, he wants, you know, yes, I love you, God. Yes, I love you, God. You know, no, he doesn't want that kind of worship. He wants us to worship him because we love him, because yeah. we, you know, have once, taken his word yeah. and into our hearts. He wants relationship. He does. Yeah. He does. And, and to me, it's so important that, you know, another reason that it talks about the stone, you know, we haven't identified who the stone is. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. We need to identify mm -hmm. the stone. Uh, who's the rock of our salvation? Christ, the Christ. solid rock. And so the stone represents Christ. It's, it's cut out without hands. Yeah. Does, does Christ have a beginning or an end? Mm -hmm. Did anybody create Christ? No. You know, no. He's cut out without hands. He is, you know, and it grows into a mountain. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole earth will be covered with the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll be, it'll be available to everyone who wants to believe. Amen. And it's not going to be just a plane. It's set up where you see it. Yeah. You know, and so I think that's important that we see that. And it struck those feet because this is the last kingdom 
the last, well, you know, the last End times. End time, yeah. It's and that's, the end times. Yeah, he doesn't strike mm -hmm. the goal because, it's gone. you know, but when you strike the feet, the whole thing crumbles. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And once again, how do we know? Because in verse uh, 28, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. He has men, uh, made known to King mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Yes. yes. That's what the whole dream is about. So... Um, what we need to be looking for as an end time generation, which we know we're in the toes, mm -hmm. because all these kingdoms have already passed mm -hmm. off the scene. Mm -hmm. So we know we're in the feet and we're probably in the toenails because look <laughs> at what's happening in the world. Yeah. So we need to be aware of what's going on in the world between church and state. Mm -hmm. And we need to be watching it. Now, if you go to the book of Revelation chapter 13, it also talks about an image, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And so in the end times, there will be another image set up, up and the choice will be to receive the mark of the beast and bow down to that image or the seal of God. Mm -hmm. And so the book of Daniel was not only written for his time, it was written especially for our generation. And in Revelation chapter 10, it says there's an angel who holds a book in his hands. Mm -hmm. And the book is opened. If we get to the end of Daniel, it says, seal up the book, Daniel, mm -hmm. and rest. And it will be revealed in the end time. The book of Daniel now, in our time, is, is an unsealed book. Yeah. And by interpretation, we know what it means. Yes. Yeah. And one other very important item... The Bible is not interpreted by the newspapers. No. Mm -hmm. The Bible interprets itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you do a word study, you will know what that word means because the Bible will tell you. And so much in the evangelical world today looks at Israel or looks at the newspapers mm -hmm. and they're interpreting what the president is doing or what somebody in politics is doing based on... Uh, the, uh, trying to apply it to the Bible. That's not how biblical interpretation no. works. No. It is interpreted within itself. Yes. And, and we see that throughout the book of Daniel. Daniel yeah. interprets himself. And then, and then of course, we believe Revelation is a companion book to Daniel. It is. Mm -hmm. and, and Daniel's the key that unlocks Revelation. So, Amen. And so it's, it's interesting how, how God, again, yeah. shows up in this dream and wants to give not only Nebuchadnezzar the interpretation, but the whole world the interpretation. Yes. And Daniel, you know, Daniel's hearing this for the first time too, you know. And so, uh, so Daniel is, as, as, he, as God's revealing it, can you imagine mm. what's going through Daniel's mind? Mm. Yeah. Speaking of God showing up, we, you just mentioned Revelation as a companion to mm -hmm. the book of Daniel. And how many years apart? were these two books written? Oh, a thousand. Centuries and yes, centuries. centuries. And well, centuries. probably a thousand, be at least a thousand, because... Yeah, uh, it, yeah probably more than that. Yeah, because uh, Revelation was written probably around A.D. 70. Yeah, it just incredible. I think, yeah, A.D. 70, about before the destruction, destruction of, of Jerusalem, Jerusalem. So probably yeah. A.D. 68 yeah. Mm -hmm. it yeah. was written. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we may not get to chapter 3, <laughs> and that's okay, because I want to go to chapter 8 real quick. Okay. Mm. You had mentioned that chapter 8 actually spells out uh, what these kingdoms are. Let's see if we can find those verses. I may need a little help here. It's all right. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. So, end verses, please. Chapter okay, verse. chapter 8. Uh, I want to start in verse 19. And I believe this is the angel Gabriel speaking. Look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation, for at the appointed time the end shall be. And now he's naming animals. Mm -hmm. Now these animals are the same representation as the image. In other words, first was the image, and now uh, God, the, through angel Gabriel, well actually the vision that Daniel is having is of animals. And here angel Gabriel is is explaining what those animals mean. Mm. Verse 20 says... Well, you need to first say, who is Gabriel? Oh, I guess so. I think everybody knows who Gabriel <laughs> is. He's an angel. He's an angel, yes. but what's his position? He's, He's next, next to, to God, the, the, and who whose place did he take? He took Lucifer's place. He took Lucifer's place. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. He's, next to the, he's next to the throne of God. Amen. He's getting his direct orders from God. Oh, if you read through the book of Daniel and, and you see mm. where Daniel is praying and God says, go to 
and God sends Gabriel, mm -hmm. and how many seconds it takes for him to get to him. Yeah. That really shows you how God answers and prayer. And Gabriel didn't just show up in Daniel in Revelation. He announced Jesus' the, the birth. birth. That's and right. Yes. He sent he, three later. And he's just been, throughout the Bible, God has sent this messenger to, to us. And I think he's in, in Revelation, too. Yes, and more than likely, he's probably the angel that rolled away the stone mm -hmm. when Christ came amen. forth. You know, we're not told that for sure, but... Yeah, uh, amen. Okay, so verse 20 says, The ram which you saw having the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. This is before mm -hmm. they controlled Babylon. Right. Okay. Verse 21, And the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. The large horn that is between its eyes is the first king, Alexander. Mm -hmm. 22, And as for the broken horn and the four that stood up in its place, four kingdoms shall rise out of that nation, but not with its power. And that was, uh, Greece was divided into four kingdoms mm -hmm. after Alexander the Great died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's four generals. Four generals, that's mm -hmm. right. And then, let's see, 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressions have reached their fullness, a king shall arise having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully, and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty, and also the holy people. And that gets further into Rome and then, of course, the little horn power, which comes out of Rome, and that's a whole nother study. That, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's just so, so fascinating. Yeah. So see how the Bible is interpreting itself. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. And I also think it's interesting, verse 46. Remember we talked about chapter 1? We're back in chapter 2 now, right? Yes. Okay. That's right. <laughs> how, um, how, how Nebuchadnezzar was basically lording it over the Hebrews. My God is better than your God. And he took the vessels and put it in his, his God's temple. Well, look at this. Verse 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they shall present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly, your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and the revealer of secrets, since you could reveal this secret. Yes. What an ending. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up because we didn't have time to read that uh, last program. But there he is. He's acknowledging he's who, acknowledging who God is. Yeah. so yeah. How, in our time today what are we 2022 yeah. what do we learn from what we've just studied what do we learn mm. well I think one thing we learn is that God's word is true yes Amen. Exactly you know if he say. says it yeah. it's gonna happen yeah. <laughs> you know it's yeah. not a matter of just like well maybe this will happen yeah. you know no this will happen yes and, and so, you know, what we're reading in Daniel has happened. You know, we're down to the very toenails mm -hmm. of this image. And so if we know that the head of gold happened just the way God said it would, and we know that the silver happened, you know, the, the breast and the arms happened just the way God said it, and then the brass and then the, the legs, and now we see that, that they're trying to mingle mm -hmm. church and state together. Mm -hmm. And so as we see that happening, well, if all these other things are true, yeah. then the last part has, has to, be, to be. be true too. Yeah. You, you know, know, people that say the Bible is a fable, just mm. a, a book of stories and fairy tales, Obviously, I have never studied the Bible. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's exactly because right. Because if you open the book and study it the way it's meant to be studied, it'll prove itself to you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Here a little, there a little. Yes. Amen. You know, yes. line upon line, precept yeah. upon precept yeah. is how we're told to study the Bible. And as we do that, you know, in Daniel, like I said, it takes us everywhere in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just, we have time, I just want yes. to read these three verses from, from Psalms chapter 40. And it says, I waited patient for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, Amen. Yeah. and set my feet upon a rock. Mm -hmm. What rock are we talking about? Yes. 
and establish my going. And he has put a new song in my mouth. And we see a new song in Revelation. Mm -hmm. It talks about the song of Moses and the Lamb. Even praise unto our God, many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. So mm -hmm. the God wants to bring us up out of that miry clay, he, out of the mm -hmm. false, false you know, worship. He wants to put us on the rock, the solid, solid rock. rock. Yes. You know, and another thing I think we can learn <clears throat> is God was not surprised by Daniel being taken captive. No. He had a plan. Mm -hmm. And when we're going through trials, and uh, there's many, many going through horrible trials, yeah. if we trust in Him, He will bring us through it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we won't suffer, mm -hmm. but it does mean that He has a plan for our life, and eventually He will bring that plan to pass. Because yes. it doesn't matter what man thinks he's doing. Man is full of pride and he thinks he's in charge, but ultimately mm -hmm. he is not in charge. Yes. God is working out his will uh, to the end, and that end is going to get us to a, a place in heaven where there will be no more suffering and no more pain oh, and amen. no more tears. And the book of Revelation says he will wipe away all of our tears. Yes. And I think we're all looking forward to that because this world is just too full of pain. You know, I, I think you, you mentioned it, but I've said this for years and years and years, Nothing takes God by surprise. That's right. Even I can remember once I had struggled and struggled and slipped and fell and and just gone back to that, you know, those old habits. Um, and I was so disappointed in myself and so disgusted, you know, and, and even crying out to God, you must be so disappointed in me. Mm -hmm. And I felt God say to me, I love you. Mm -hmm. Nothing takes me by surprise, that's right. you know, and it, that's always stuck with me, that feeling that God knows the beginning from the end, that we can't um, surprise him, you know, that, he, that he's always there and, and just ready to forgive us and, and give us a new start. Amen. We must remember we're in a great controversy between yeah. good and evil. And, that, and that's, you know, and it brings out too that, you know, when the, the rock, it crushes Mm -hmm. that, you know, and just into pieces. Mm -hmm. But when we, when we fall on the rock and we stand mm -hmm. on the rock, mm -hmm. then we are, on, like I said, again, we're on solid ground. Yeah. But if the rock, you know, we don't want to be crushed by the rock. We, yeah. don't, we want to be able to stand on the rock. Yeah. The lyrics of that song, and I just wrote about this a, a few days ago, but, you know, Christ the solid rock, mm -hmm. that we could stand on that rock and, and live. So Joe, Daniel is a book of encouragement. Yes, Amen. It is. Well, we're out of time. Oh, my, again. Let's do chapter three next program. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We hope you've been blessed. I'm learning uh, as we go along. I hope you are too. And more than anything, we want you to take away from this program that you can trust the Bible, that you can trust God, that Jesus loves you, and he's coming soon.